Apple's WWDC event is less than three weeks away, and I believe we'll see at least two M4 Max models unveiled. This might contradict Mark Gurman's prediction that the first M4 Max won't be released until the fall. However, the more I dig into the details, the more convinced I am that the M4 Max will launch next month. Mark Gurman has suggested that the Mac Studio and Mac Pro won't get updated until mid-2025, roughly nine months after the M4 Max MacBook Pro is released this fall. This makes little sense to me. The current M2 Ultra Mac Studio and Mac Pro are already lagging behind the M3 Max MacBook Pro in several tasks due to its significant graphics advancements, including hardware ray tracing. The M3 Max MacBook Pro even outperforms the M2 Ultra at 8K editing, despite lacking ray tracing support. It seems improbable that Apple would leave the Mac Studio and Mac Pro with outdated M2 Ultra hardware for nine more months after the M4 Max release. The M4 chip in the new iPad Pro exceeded expectations compared to the M3, indicating that the M4 Max will significantly outperform the M2 Ultra. Gear One's review of the M4 chip highlighted massive advancements in memory bandwidth, latency, and an overall 8% IPC improvement, excluding the gains in Geekbench and clock speed for the performance cores, E-cores, and GPU cores. This suggests that the rest of the M4 family will see substantial improvements, especially the M4 Ultra. Fixit confirmed that the 8GB M4 iPad Pro includes two 6GB RAM modules, secretly giving it 12GB of RAM. This suggests that the base M4 Max will finally support up to 256GB of RAM on the M4 Ultra. For those holding out hope for a Mac Studio update with the M3 Ultra chip at WLDDC, I can assure you this won't happen for several compelling reasons. First, releasing an old Gen M3 Ultra chip after unveiling the new M4 architecture would be a poor marketing move. Apple likely aims to discontinue M3 chip production as soon as possible, possibly due to a contract or strategic plan with TSNC, the chip manufacturer. This transition is expected to be completed by spring 2025, coinciding with the rumored replacement of the last M3 Mac, the current M3 MacBook Air. The M3 chips are based on TSNC's custom M3B process node, which was a temporary solution before the full M3E technology was ready in 2024. The M3B node is expensive, with port yields and incompatibility with TSNC's other M3 nodes, M3E, N3P, and N3X. It's in the best interest of both Apple and TSMC to shut down N3B production and fully switch to N3E by spring 2025. Apple seems to have known for over a year that the N3 chips would have a short lifespan, avoiding them in products with longer update cycles. For instance, the M3 MacBook Air was released without a corresponding Mac Mini update. Similarly, Apple skipped the M3 chip for the new iPad Pro, opting for the M4 chip instead, as it updates every 1.5 years. The iPad Air received the older M2 chip, and the Vision Pro headset also got the M2 chip, despite the M3 being available. This aligns with a strategy to avoid short-lived M3 updates for long-cycle products. Examining the M3 Max chip's design reveals the absence of the Ultra Fusion connector found in the M1 and M2 Max dies, used to create the Ultra chip. This suggests Apple planned to skip the M3 Ultra chip, removing the Ultra Fusion connector to save space and reduce costs. Trendforce hinted earlier this year that the new Mac Studio would be updated at WWDC with a chip built on TSNC's N3E process, pointing to the M4 Ultra chip. Apple plans to use M2 Ultra chips in servers for AI processing, later upgrading to M4 Ultra chips, skipping the M3 Ultra. This indicates a surplus of unsold M2 Ultra chips, possibly due to poor sales of the Mac Studio and Mac Pro, overshadowed by the M3 Max MacBook Pro. It's unlikely Apple will leave these high-end desktops outdated for another year. I predict Apple will release at least two desktop machines at WWDC with the M4 Ultra chip, likely the Mac Studio and Mac Pro. Despite Mark Gurman's consistent predictions, it would be a significant misstep if Apple delays these updates until mid-next year. If the M4 Ultra Max are announced, it implies revealing the M4 Max and possibly the M4 Pro chip, likely in a new Mac Mini. 
Apple may unveil the entire M4 family of chips at WWDC, focusing on desktop Macs first to boost high margin sales. The M4 family would then roll out to MacBooks in the fall, reversing Apple's previous strategy of prioritizing MacBook updates. This new approach could ensure high-end desktops consistently outperform the 16-inch MacBook Pro, enhancing Apple's product lineup. If my theory holds, Apple strategically positions itself for future success. If not, the current approach may need re-evaluation. Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more updates. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.